The Pearl of the Soul of the World by Meredith Ann Pierce. Chapter One, Pearl Light. She had no idea where she was, only that she was in a cave, the walls pressing close about her, all of white stone. Light came from somewhere dim and diffuse, and the air was old, musty, and bone dry. She was thirsty, so thirsty, all her limbs felt stiff, and behind her right ear crouched a pain she knew she mustn't touch. Her hair felt sticky, matted there. She gazed at the featureless walls of the cave. She had been lost for a long time. Her stomach nodded, doubling her over. She knelt on the hard, gritty surface of the tunnel floor until the spasm passed. She must keep moving, find food and water or die. She had no idea how she had come to be in the cave. Only the certainty that something was hunting her, following relentlessly a shadow, some living being, black as night, she was glad of the light. She managed to rise and realize that where, where the light came from, and realize then where the light came from. It came from her, from the space between her breasts. Puzzled, she reached into, the, into her gown to lift out what lay against her breastbone. Glimmering softly through the gauze-thin fabric, a pearl, big as the end of her thumb. It glowed with a faint blue light. Memory teased her. Only a glimpse of a tiny creature with lace-like wings laying the pearl upon her hand. How long ago had that been? She could not remember. She put the pearl back into her gown, and shining through the pale yellow cloth, its light seemed white again. Frowning, the girl examined the garment, yards and yards of air-thin stuff. A wedding sari. Why was she wearing a wedding sari? An image formed itself, unbidden in her mind. A young man with dun-colored skin and long black hair. His eyes were clear blue, almond-shaped. One cheek was scarred. What had he to do with her gown? Dizziness overcame her and she clutched at the wall. Sure that if she fell again, she would be too weak to rise. She struggled to recall who the young man was and what the pearl upon her breast might be. But all her memories slipped away, beads hopelessly scattered from a broken string. The fierce ache in her head would not let, it, let her gather there. A sheet of mirror stone loomed before her, darker than the rest of the cave. She saw a figure in its smooth, polished surface, a tall, thin girl, just crossing into womanhood, cheeks hollowed, fingers like bone. The pale, pale hair that fell to her shoulders was disheveled. Slant green eyes gazed, blinking, huge as a bird's. She cast no shadow in the warm pearl, in the wan pearl light. The girl halted, gasping as the pang in her skull spiked almost unbearably. She must not see herself. The pain behind her ear forbade it, as it forbade her to know or to remember herself. She wrenched her gaze away from her own image and hurried past, for in that moment she realized just how lost she truly was. She had no idea who she was, and we will pause there.